Hello there, and welcome to Miss Red Nebula's Planko Tips. In this video, I'll explain how you can change the size of your sandbox or challenge park, and how to change or add locations for guests to spawn. You can do both of these through the Scenario Editor. If you're just starting a brand new park, you can go straight to the Scenario Editor and create a new scenario. But if you've already got a park you want to edit, go to My Parks, hover over the park you wish to adjust, and click on Edit as New Scenario. Since I'm planning to make changes to this sandbox and save over this file, I'm just going to keep the same name. However, you can change the name if you wish to keep a backup of the original park file. When it first opens, you'll get this screen explaining scenarios. Just click Continue. Now we're in the Scenario Editor panel, which is exactly where we want to be. If you close this panel, just click the icon with the cross pencil and ruler in the top right corner to get it back. Go to the second tab labeled Park, then click the Edit Park Dimensions and Guest Spawn Points button. You'll be zoomed out so you can see the whole park boundary at once. There's a limit to how much bigger the park can go, but it is quite a bit larger than the default park size. If you just want as much room as possible, change the width and length to 1000 each, and the height to 625. Note that when you have the boundary size as large as it will go, the boundary offset arrows are grayed out and cannot be changed. If you want to have a smaller or more unique park boundary, you can play around with the size and offset however you wish. When you close this window, you'll be able to see the park boundary as a faint dotted line. As long as you're still in the Scenario Editor, you can build and terraform outside of the boundary, but as soon as you return to Sandbox or Challenge mode, you'll only be able to make changes within the dotted line. For default maps, the guest spawn point is tucked away inside of a cave, but now you can change that. If you just want to move the spawn point, go ahead and select it. You can then move it wherever you wish. Make sure to note the arrows which show you which direction the guests spawn in. I'll just clean up the original entrance a bit. You can have multiple spawn points too. There are two ways to add additional spawn points. While you can add them from the Scenario Editor by going back to Edit Park Dimensions and Guest Spawn Points, it's slightly awkward because the camera always zooms out after you place one. As it is now, an easier way is to simply select an existing spawn point and make a duplicate of it. Guest spawn points can be inside or outside of the park boundary. It doesn't matter, but if it's outside, you must build a path in while still in the Scenario Editor, or guests won't be able to access the park. If it's inside, it's a good idea to lock the object so it doesn't accidentally get deleted once you're back in Sandbox mode. Obviously, the spawn points are a little bland on their own, but you can put a building around them or dress them up in other creative ways. I've seen guests spawning from buses, elevators, boats, even a few spaceships. Somewhere between the spawn point and your park, don't forget to add a park entrance. It's best not to put the entrance too close to the spawn point, as guests sometimes stand around deciding whether to enter the park, and it can get overcrowded. Again, make sure it's facing the right way. The turnstile gate should be aimed away from the spawn point into the park. When you're happy with your park's dimensions and spawn points, we can revert it to a sandbox or challenge park. Go to the Options menu and click Save Park. If it's not already highlighted, select the park name to overwrite it. Or, if you want to preserve your original park file, click New Park Save and enter a different name. Then click Save Scenario and Play. This will open the park as a scenario, but it won't have any objectives. That's fine. Just hit Continue, and then go to the Options menu again, and click Save Park. 
since we're done with the scenario itself at this point, we can just save over the scenario editor file. If it's not already selected, click it and then save part, and yes when asked to overwrite it. Now exit to the main menu. Click Play and My Parks. Your park will be there as a scenario as though it's being played in career mode. Hover over that file and click Open As. You're given the option of Sandbox or Challenge. We'll be returning this park back to a sandbox, so click that. Use the name given and click Start New. Now we're in our adjusted park, but back in sandbox mode. As I mentioned before, you can now only edit within the park boundaries you set up, and objects you locked in the scenario editor cannot be moved or deleted. The last step is to save your sandbox park. Go to Options and Save Park. Here you can save over the custom scenario park. It is now officially a sandbox again. If you need to make additional changes to the park size, spawn points, or any locked scenery, you can open it again in the scenario editor as many times as you need to using the first few steps in this video. Otherwise, you're done! I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Feel free to like or comment and leave any suggestions for quick tips or tutorials you'd like to see me do. And if you want random updates from my Planet Coaster exploits, you can subscribe too. That's all for now. Bye!